Today we're going to do stuff a bit differently because, truthfully, I'm kind of tired. Because I was up all night. <sighs> yep, that's right. I was up all night reading, 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 reading the books. And now, I'm still in bed. Thanks to God. So, I'm just going to sit here in my bed with the cover and tell you guys why I was up all night, what I was reading. The first book that I want to talk about is the book that started my downward slide into reading out life, and that's Christopher Moore's Demon Kitten. This is the story of Catch, which is this little green guy here, and his unlikely keeper, an ex-priest named Travis, and how they wreak havoc on the little town of Pine Cove, California. Now, Travis and Catch have been together for nine years, ever since Catch saved Travis from this kind of mean girl, mean girl gone awry um, equivalent of his boss, who was a priest that he was studying under when he went to seminary. Um, it's kind of, I can't even think of the book by Dan Brown, but um, yeah, Da Vinci Code. Anyway, anyway, Travis was being beaten by this priest, and he found this scroll and did the little invocation, and bam, out pops catch. So, they've been together for 90 years, and let's just say... They have sort of a love-hate relationship. Catch loves being out of his entrapment. But he hates being with Travis. Travis loves the fact that he's not getting the hell beat out of him by that priest anymore. But he hates being attached to Catch. So, anyway... They find themselves in this little town of Pine Cove, California. And Travis meets a girl because even though he's 90, he looks like he's about 25. And he decides that he's going to go on his first date. The problem with him going on his date is he loses focus on catch, which is one of the um, things that's keeping catch under control. So when he loses his focus on catch, catch kind of runs a muck a muck a muck a muck and eats people and causes all kind of havoc that he's not supposed to cause and convinces people that he's some kind of benevolent earth spirit so that he can find a new master with a little less scruples than um, Travis has. Because he needs somebody that's a little, shall we say, uh, morally ambivalent. So that he can truly go out and have all the demonic fun that he wants to. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to Catch and Travis, there is a djinn who declares himself king of the djinn that is in search of Catch because he wants to redo the invocation and send Catch back to the realms of hell where he belongs 
but this gym needs a little help. So he goes and finds the proprietor of the general store named Augustus Bryan. Augustus Bryan looks more like Santa than Ghost Busty, Demon Hunty, Van Helsing. And his goal in life is just to stay the hell out of the thick of it. But after meeting the king of the djinn, or this genie, for those of you who don't know what a djinn is, he finds himself right in the thick of things. Just right there, front and center. Just, uh, so, he's just poor man. Okay? And there are all these sub stories and background things going on with different characters in the uh, in the book. There's Mavis who owns the head of the slug which is a bar and she has this guy that's working for her that's a pool hustler and she's in on it because she gets a cut of what he takes. There's this guy named uh, Billy who is a night auditor at the local Please back Motel, who also doubles as Roxanne, sex goddess, vixen, and wears red high heels when he's talking to his um, online lovers who swear up and down he's a girl. And there's just all kinds of people in this book, and all of them are kooky and not quite right, but lovable all the same. And this is just an awesome book. Again, guys, that's Christopher Moore's Practical Demon Keeping. Um, this is my first read by him. And I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. First reason I was up all night. I'll draw. I'll draw.